cover why do we want to migrate and modernize. Um, also, we're going to look on how to identify end of life and discontinued equipment. We're going to go over product life, um, life cycle status, identify legacy networks and protocols, talk a little bit about step forward program, options for performing migrations, IO wiring conversion systems, code conversion tools, IAB, um, integrated architecture builder. And we're going to show a few examples, uh, for instance, like a um, Micrologix 1500 migration, a slick to compact Logix 5380 controller, uh, PLC5 to control Logix. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dig in. So why should we migrate or discontinue our, our migrate our discontinued or into life equipment. First of all, and most importantly, you have some equipment that's been in service, you know, more more than likely 10 or plus years, and, and that piece of equipment is running flawlessly, right? So why would you want to migrate it? Well, every piece of equipment has a lifespan, you know, and when these pieces of equipment in the uh, in the more mature ages of their life, they're more prone to, to issues, breakdowns, um, and when this equipment becomes end of life or discontinued, availability for parts becomes limited. And also the cost of these parts. So Rockwell tries to support their equipment as long as they can. But once a product comes into the end of life cycle, the availability of the parts becomes um, reduced and the cost of the equipment increases. So that's one reason, because uh, if your equipment fails and you're unable to get the parts, you're going to experience, you know, extended lengths of downtime until these parts arrive. And, you know, trying to keep all these parts as, as spares in your inventory becomes pretty cumbersome and very costly. And uh, large spare parts inventories, you know, um, are hard to maintain. So another reason to migrate is to take advantage of newer technology, right? Because a lot of these legacy pieces of equipment are using outdated networks and protocols. Um, and, you know, everything is migrating now to Ethernet. So some of the older systems that have control net, device net, um, data highway plus, remote IO, DH45, you know, those are older um, network protocols and some of those protocols such as remote IO and um, data highway and DH45 are no longer supported. So a lot of the communication modules are no longer available. A third reason is if you're planning to do an upgrade on a piece of equipment, right, you're going to add some new equipment to it. Well, this new equipment may not be compatible with your older systems. So that's a good reason to go ahead and start your migration. You know, it's very proactive, you know, when you decide to migrate, you know, you're doing it on your terms and your timing, right? When a machine breaks down, you know, there's no planning. It's you have to act immediately and you're very reactive. So with that being said, those are some of the reasons why you'd want to migrate your PLCs to a newer version. So first of all, on this slide, this is the product lifestyle category definitions. So Rockwell classifies all of their their equipment on this lifestyle uh, life cycle categories. So these are the the four different categories: active, which is the most current product offering within a category. Product does not have to be recently launched. So um, like Control Logic is an active product. Um, Active mature, this product is fully supported and available, but a newer family exists. Um, gain value by migrating to newer families. So, like for instance, this would kind of refer to the um, the 5370 compact logic. So the newer version is the 5380s. Um, they're still active, they're still available, still fully supported, but there's a newer version available. And then the third category is end of life, discontinued date announced, actively executing migrations, and last time buys. And then this is the point when the price starts to go up and the availability starts to go down. 
So just keep that into mind. And then obviously discontinued. No product, um, new product no longer available. You're, you're going to have to use a repair or an exchange device, um, which um, is, is typically supported for quite a while once it's discontinued. But there's going to be a point when the repairs are no longer and exchanges are no longer available due to parts availability. So go ahead, uh, next slide, Sergio. So here's a few examples of some products that, that are in the end of life or discontinued. So the PLC-5. Um, we've got the, the panel view standards, uh, Micrologics 1000, 1500, uh, the 1200. Um, we've got, uh, you know, some of the old drives like the 1336 drives, the 1305 drives. Um, these are all either end of life or discontinued. Okay, next slide. So network longevity. So this is kind of what I touched on quickly is that uh, some of these networks, um, such as DH plus, um, DH485, and remote I.O. are discontinued. So when you're looking to do a PLC migration, one thing you want to look at is, is there any network connectivity? I mean, is your PLC communicating to drives, to panel views, and what network, network is it using? So. When you do a migration, sometimes you can't just do the PLC. You know, you have to look at, you know, is there an older panel view? Is there some drives? Um, and, you know, having a lot of drive experience, uh, the remote I.O. being discontinued um, is really not left a lot of options for people to add or upgrade drives on a remote I.O. system. Um, then we got control net, which is also end of life, device net, which is active mature, um, and Ethernet, which is fully supported, new product development. This is the wave of the future. Everything is moving towards Ethernet IP. Um, it's all part of the connected enterprise. All right, next slide. So this is the step forward program. So when you're thinking about doing a migration or modernization, we have the step forward program. What this does is will give you allow us to give you a discount on the new equipment, but part of that discount is that um, you will have to decommission or you know um, exchange the the older products. Um, so you typically you know the, the discounts vary depending on what the product is, and you have 90 days to to return the older products. So there's uh there's two categories for these uh you know software and hardware um so any questions regarding this you know we can do a case by case um uh workup if you're interested next slide so one how do you identify your legacy equipment so rockwell has an online life cycle lookup tool so when you go to Rockwell Automation and under Knowledge Base, under Support, if you scroll down, you'll come up to this uh, product life cycle status. So here you can actually enter the catalog number of the equipment you want to check, and it will give you a result on what the current life cycle status is. So next slide. So here's result we we put in the uh, 1768 l45 um and it came up with all these results so you can see that the l45s is at end of life but the l45 is discontinued so this this is a great way to check what the status of your product is and with that being said we also have what is called an ibe it's an install bait based valuation and it's a service that we offer here at OneSource. So this service, um, you know, will give you a quote, and, and it's based either on your whole plant or on specific pieces of equipment. But what we do is we come in and do an audit of the equipment, and the audit um, is either for all Rockwell product products or Rockwell and third-party products. So our auditors come in, go through the equipment and they document all of the products. Um, and then a comprehensive report is uh, supplied to the customer 
showing all the products that they have in that piece of equipment, the, the life cycle status. Um, it actually shows you what a replacement part is. It gives you recommended spare parts. Um, it's a very comprehensive report. Um, and what it does, it allows you to look at what you have and to see what's discontinued, not just one piece, but the whole piece of equipment in total. Um, and this is a great way to identify, um, you know, potential migrations and modernizations, you know, because you can do it based on the piece of equipment that is most critical in your, in your facility. So uh, next slide. So here's that product uh, life cycle status for like the slicks, um, MicroLogix and Compact Logics. So you can see the Compact Logics, um, the 5380 and the 5370 is they're active for for many many years. Um, the the slicks uh, 503s, 504s, and 505s are active mature um, and they're ending. They're coming close to the end of life. Um, and then we've got our compact logics, the L32E, L35E, and the L43 and L45 are at end of life. Um, and actually, uh, the uh, 43 and 45 are, are actually um, discontinued. This, this slide is just a little outdated as of July of 2020. Um, and then also the, um, the L30s, L31s, L35s. Um, are all discontinued, along with the MicroLogix 1000, 1500, and also the 1200. Um, the 1100 and 1400 are still still active, mature. Um, next slide, Sergio. So here's an example of a uh, PLC5 migration. So on the left, you can see we've got a PLC5 rack with a controller and I.O. And to the right is a, uh, it's been migrated to a control logics. So if you can see on this, this, uh, picture here on the right, the control logics rack is like mounted onto the top of the, of the PLC5 chassis. But what it is, it's actually an IO conversion, um, system. So this kind of simplifies your migration as far as the physical work. So with this type of a migration, there's no wires being disconnected. Um, it, it, uh, you remove the existing rack, you put in this base unit. Um, it utilizes the, the swing arms from the existing rack that, that are wired to your field devices. So there's no disconnecting any of your field wiring to your IO modules. You just remove the swing arm. Yeah, so in this picture here, you'll see the, the base plate um, that has the, um, the rail on the top for the swing arms. Um, and so there's these conversion modules based on the uh, 1771 modules you're, you're replacing. Um, so these plug into the base plate. Um, and then there's the cables that plug it, that are pre-wired that plug into here that are, um, ordered to mate with the, the new um, 1756 IO in the uh, 1756 chassis. Um, so the plate goes, once you put in the, um, the conversion modules into the base plate and plug in the cables, then you put the uh, cover plate on. The cover plate has got pre-drilled pre and tapped holes for the 1756 chassis. Uh, so you mount the chassis, install the I.O., and then the cables already have uh, the removable terminal blocks that just plug into the I.O., and all of your wiring's done. Yeah, you don't have to worry about miswiring anything, um, don't have to remove any of the wiring, change labels. Um, it just uh, eliminates any potential mistakes. Um, so right here, this shows the, the four pieces, right? So in the upper left, we have the base plate that uh, once you remove the uh, the PLC-5 chassis, you mount the base plate and same mounting holes. Um, you add the conversion modules, uh, the lower left, um, add those into the, the base plate, attach the cables to the lower right, and then cover that with the uh, cover plate, and then you mount your um, ControlLogix chassis, and then plug in 
the other end of the cables to the, the new I.O. Next slide. So here, um, so this kind of just shows the migration. Um, you got a little picture here where the, the Data Highway Plus um, that has a panel view, a standard panel view. Um, you could still make this work in the migration as long as the firmware compatibility lines up. Um, but typically you would want to, to remove this data highway and move everything into Ethernet like you see on, um, you know, this, this shows actually the remote I.O., which is no longer supported. But um, so anyways, at this point, I'm going to hand this over to Sergio, and he's going to show you a few of the different uh, migration um, options. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Matt. Um, one thing that I'd like to, uh, good morning, by the way, everyone, um, to uh, comment, it's the um, Step Forward program. Um, there are two categories, as Matt said, software and hardware. For the software, the program is an instant discount, um, and the discount varies depending on the software to be upgraded. And on the hardware side, is going to be a credit. So you buy your product at a discounted rate that you have, and then when you return the old hardware in working conditions, we send it over to Rockwell. Rockwell analyzes that it qualifies for the upgrade, and then they will issue a credit back to us, which, uh, which will pass on to you. That's, that's the way the Step Forward program works. Um, to continue with the um, migration options, the MicroLogix has been one of the most popular uh, MicroLogix controllers, the 1500, uh, that it could be just a base or uh, expanded with some IOs. We have a couple of options to migrate to. The uh, One of them is into the MicroLogix uh, 1400, and that's the easiest way as long as it has enough IOs because the, the program conversion is going to be relatively easy. The other option, if you want to use more uh, benefits and features of the compact logic, will be to go into a probably L2 or any of the compact logics. Migrating SLCs into compact logics could be done. Same thing applies to the PLC5. It can be done phases. It doesn't have to be all at once. So you can perhaps retain the I.O. as shown here on the right, uh, and then just con uh, change the controller. And one of the reasons for that would be because you need to do some more uh, Ethernet IP connectivity that the SLC was limited into. Um, you need to control some distributed I.O., some VFDs, you know, things like that. So that would be the perfect way to do it. Later on, you can remove the I.O.s and uh, do it in phases. The you know, same thing happens with the, um, the SLC when you were using the serial port. Uh, none of the compact logics or control logics processors that we have right now have a serial port. All of them have a USB port, but that is only for programming. Um, so if you need a serial port, we do have an Ethernet, adapt I mean, uh, a serial uh, module for the compact logics that can be used. Um, if you have the time um, to migrate and the budget to migrate everything, you can just do it all at once um, using, as Matt mentioned earlier, some of the uh, 1492 wiring arms that makes it very, very convenient uh, to do it that way. So here are some samples of uh, similar to the ones that Matt showed that were for the PLC-5. These are for the uh, um, SLCs into the 5069 um, family for the compact logics. And the advantage of doing it this way is because you can remove the SLC and the IOs and put this thing together within probably 10, 12 minutes, depending on the chassis size. If for some reason, after you have converted the code, it just doesn't work, you can go back to the old SLC or PLC5 system within less than an hour and your system is up and running again, so you have no risk. Sometimes, if you have all the time, um, probably you don't want to use the, uh, the, the migration kit, that's fine. Um, but as soon as you start disconnecting every single wire, going back to the original setup is going to be difficult. So, again, um, you just need to be sure that you have enough time to do it that way. Another very popular controller that we have sold for a long time, and many of those is the, uh, the original Compact Logic. That one had a serial port and only had one Ethernet port. So the same thing happens here. You can um, migrate 
uh, into a newer compact logic. And basically, you just replace the compact logic, and if you need a serial port, you put it next to it. Or you have the option to uh, migrate um, all the system into a new compact logic, the uh, 5380 family. Um, another very popular compact logic was the L4 family, and that was was very popular because it was the first compact logic that we had that supported multiple networks, and it also supported motion. So it was very popular for motion applications done via the Circos network, which is a fiber optic. So now we can do, as Matt mentioned, we can do everything over Ethernet. So if you have this or a similar system, you retain. You don't have to, but you could retain all the IOs to save all the wiring labor uh, and cost, of course, and then just replace the processor and any associated networks that you might that you might need. Um, so now, the when you need to migrate the code, um, the Studio 5000 has a built-in application that is going to allow you to migrate either SLC or PLC5 programs into a compact logic. If the program was 100% digital, it would do 100% conversion. As soon as you have messages, as soon as you have any network devices or analog, then the percentage goes down, probably down to an 80%. And uh, th that saves a lot of time. A lot of customers, they decide to not use this tool because they want to use new features built in into the compact logics to make things easier. And you might be able to reduce the programming probably you know, one third of the original one and have it more documented. So you have the option to do it either way. Um, some of the tools that we also have, it's an uh, integrated architecture builder uh, in Proposal Works. These tools are free and they will allow you to come up with a bill of material. We can always assist you, of course, uh, doing this. Uh, and you can migrate um, SLCs, to uh, compact logics or SLCs to control logics, PLC5 to control logics or um, compact logics. We also have lots of information available. Uh, we have lots of literature in how to migrate um, any of the controls that we talk to into a neural one, um, SLCs to compact logics or uh, compact logics to, I mean, uh, PLC5 to control logics. So again, all of this information is available on the Rockwell website. Um, and if you need any specifics, please just let us know. Uh, besides the information publication, we have lots of samples available that you can download to facilitate the code migration. There are a lot of, uh, you know, quick start notes about how to use ser new serial ports, um, how to do an Ethernet communication, an Ethernet message to a drive. Um, basically, there are lots of information available. Um, there's also, um, by the way, we're going to be sharing this, this information um, with all the attendees. So you'll have all these uh, uh, links available for you. Um, you know, there's a bunch of questions with answers in the knowledge base from Bravo Automation. And uh, basically, this is going to be the end of the presentation. Um, we do have a couple of minutes to show you a video and then we can probably uh, go through uh, if there are any questions or if you have a very specific question that you didn't ask, uh, feel free to reach out to your FSR or directly to Matt or myself, depending on your territory, and we can assist you for sure on any applications that you might have.
Perfect. Um, well, that's that's the end of the um, uh, presentation. I think we have a couple of questions. Matt, if you want to answer one of those, and I'll answer the other one. Sure. So let me. The first one uh, that I see here, maybe uh, Adrian can also help us with the questions. What does the software see of the new migrated hardware? Let's see. Does it see an old I/O module or a new I/O module? Oh, you use it. I guess this is regarding the uh, conversion uh, tool, I/O wiring conversion tool. It, it will it will see the new module. We can also take them off of mute if we want. Uh, yeah, can you yeah, that, that's that's a good question. That anyone has? Yeah, uh, it'd probably be easier to have to like chatting back and forth. Joe, do you want to expand on your question? You should be able yeah. to see. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I was just curious. Uh, after the conversion is uh, done on the uh, on, on the uh, Rockwell software. The uh, Studio 5000 does the um, when you configure the uh, module, digital input or output module, does it see it as a control logic uh, I/O module, or does it see it as the old 1771 module? No, it'll see it as the new um, 1756 uh, control logic I/O module. And then the um, the I/O. Uh, uh, tags or addresses, are they retained or are they uh, converted as well? Well, with the conversion tool, um, your tag will actually be the address that you would see in the PLC5 for that I.O. So it'll be like an alias or something? It'll, it's uh, so like, um, like if you've got, uh, um, I colon three slash that's going to be your tag name. Okay. So the one thing you have to be concerned about when you use the conversion tool is um, you're just going to have addresses and you're not going to have descriptions. So you may have to go back and either change the tag to a uh, descriptive tag name or put a description on that tag because the tag is going to actually be the address that it was that was used in the, the PLC-5 program. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that will be correct. That will be basically an alias. What I've seen a lot of customers do is that they, uh, if they don't like it, or maybe they do because they were used to that type of addressing, they leave it like that. But if not, you do have the option to export your database into Excel, then modify it to something that means more to you, and then yes. import it back into the program. And it's much quicker doing it through Excel than trying to do it in the program. Or you can create aliases. You can leave those tag names as addresses and then create an alias to have a more descriptive uh, tag name. Got it. But typically on a larger program, like Sergio said, you know, exporting the, uh, the tags out and doing it in Excel is much more uh, efficiently, much more efficient. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Yeah, that's the only drawback with the uh, software conversion tool um, is that it, it, it just creates those tags with addresses. So you'll have tags that are like N7s, you know, 10, um, which doesn't really mean a lot if you don't have some kind of description when you're going through the program. Right, right. But it, it does help to that's your cross reference between the old and the new. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So the wiring tool is just basically a way that you're extending your field wiring into your controller without you know utilizing the old swing arms or old removable terminal blocks, depending if it's you know PLC five or a a slick. Right. Okay, I, I, uh, that answers my question. Thank you. Great, thank you. 
Does anybody else have any questions? I think we're good. Um, well, I uh, want to thank everybody for attending today. We really appreciate your time. Yeah, and again, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us via uh, your FSR or directly to us, and we'll be uh, more than happy to assist you with any migration needs that you, that you might have. Thank you so much for attending. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.